I first came to London in 1971. Time, of course, has cemented things over so that this now seems like the inevitable cause. But at the time, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know if it was breakfast or lunch. You better go child for through some miracle you're good and you're decent and you're strong. All I knew was that I wanted girls. As many girls as I was able to find. We want you, darling. No tears, no grief. Now or later. I wasn't going to be particularly choosy. In fact, I wasn't choosy at all. In those days, there were still good jobs on Fleet Street. Young men could get them almost off the street. That's no longer so. I don't mean to be nostalgic. After all, this is only nine years ago. Night desk. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But don't worry, Lonnie. Everything's in hand. Yeah, we've got it away around about 10.30. Yeah, well, I shall. No, thanks. Okay. Somebody left me this stuff to go over. Okay, that's fine. Let's take a look. Have you had supper? Help yourself, have some of mine. Senior government ministers assembled. It was beer and sandwiches for lunch. Talks in deadlock. Nation held to ransom. Old woman dying in street. Ah. Can I help you? Are you who I'm waiting for? My name is Colin. I write the gossip. Don't worry, it's all right. I shan't gossip about you. You going to tell me where it comes from? Huh? Okay. Well, then I can't no, just go. Fair enough. Well, look, all right. If you'd excuse me, I'd be grateful. I'll just take a look. You hungry? Mmm. Go and eat some pasta. Yes, I'd like to. Well, I'm very hot on clams. I really like clams. This looks first rate. I have to thank you. It's such a bitch getting decent stuff around here. I don't suppose you deal in anything hard, huh? Yeah, we do have laughing gas. But only in cylinders. Yes. Well, perhaps not. Why don't I... Hey. Are you coming? Caroline. From that day on, things were never easy. Something had changed for the rest of my life. How do you choose who you persecute? What? On the column. Oh, well, I mean, I don't think I'd call what we do persecution. I... Well, what do you think? Do you think I should cut it? It's fine. It's absolute rubbish. Congratulations. You've got the house stone. Later that night, I started dumping girlfriends. I call them girlfriends. They were just girls. Meryl! God, hey, good to hear you. Now I'd have trouble remembering their faces. It was a massacre. How are you? All on the phone. Fact is, it's ridiculous. I'm in bed with measles. Andrew has to leave my medicine outside the door. No. I promise I was joking. No, well, sometimes I can't tell myself. Of course. No, well, look. I'll talk to you, Meryl. It's shameless. It's ugly. <laughs> it's absurd. At the paper, I found out Caroline's surname. Next day, I gave her a call. It was easy. She agreed to an interview. I didn't mention I'd seen her before. Are you the journalist? Yeah, I'm William Koufax. I rang you earlier. It's good of you to meet. You must tell me what it I is that you're I just want some background. For... Yes, I'm sure. Let me see what I can do. 
This is really just the facade of the gallery. This is where anyone can come in off the street. We have the usual changing exhibitions. They're regularly advertised. Anyone can come. This really isn't the center of the business. The real selling, well, it goes on elsewhere. In here, this is where they do nine-tenths of their trade. The customer sits down. He is alone with the painting. Once he sits down, it takes nerve to get up. These are the bins. Mostly they hold this stuff and release it on the market at a certain rate. The idea is to protect any artist that they sell. If too much of an artist's work comes available, you pretty soon find his price starts to slide. Who wants to pay top price for Picasso when there are 20 other Picassos for sale? So we keep an eye on all the other outlets, buy everything up and hold it in here. More. Hepworth. Mondrian. That's why the galleries prefer dead artists. They don't spoil the market by turning out more. What sort of price do you charge for Liechtenstein? Well, it entirely depends on the size. We look in the price book, there's a charge per square foot, we take a tape measure and we work it out like that. But that's... What? Doesn't quality come into it? No, of course not. Why should it? That's not our business. But if Liechtenstein painted a masterpiece, wouldn't they feel they had to charge more? Good Lord, no. Are you mad? Then when he did a bad one, they'd have to charge less. Something about it. It's really amazing. It's just logical. It's just a business, that's all. I can tell it must really hurt your ethics. Ethics mean so much on Fleet Street, I know. All right. Well, is that Would not you come so... to dinner? Why do you find it so hard to ask? Well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Let's dump the Hockney. I don't see why we shouldn't. It's easy to unload. Two men. That's right. Having a shower. Well, how should I know? Shampoo, could be soap. Can I leave these, Missy? I'll be back in the morning. I'll well, tell you what. That last one is the stone the sign. Engine. He's ready. Call it a series, then you're away. Home. Are you going with the journalist? Why don't you ask him if he's got a friend? Our attitude is this. It's a figurative masterpiece, and if he doesn't like it, let him shit in his hat. Where are we going, William? Oh, what? Well, I was thinking. Well, to be honest, I was hoping you'd say. Of course, I can see from the very beginning. I was never myself when I was with her. But this is nice. This is very nice. I don't know why you kept saying it was vile. No, well, I suppose it was silly. It's so stupid. I've never understood it. Men are always saying they're sorry. They say it all the time. I wonder, could I get you some brandy? Hmm? I have some brandy. Oh, yes, OK. I'm really pleased you decided to come back with me. Just feel... 
a good time. William, I want to make love to you. Why don't we... Who do you have living next to you? Oh, Andrew. He's an Arabic freak. He's doing his thesis in this strange little writing. He sits in there, works at it, never looks up. He sounds wonderful. Yes, yes, he's nice. His work is his life. Here. Here, I drink to your happiness. William, let's get into bed. He can speak 13 dialects, Arabic languages. There are that many. The thesis he's writing is all toward a dictionary. It's a dictionary of 16th century Arabic slang. He really is prodigiously clever. He is really a very clever man. I love more than anything to make love to strangers. It's the only time I forget who I am. Shall I answer it? Sure, if you'd like. Yes? Yes. Hello, Nicholas. What? Who is it? No, no, it's fine. That's why I left this number. What's the matter? What? What for? Oh, no. Jesus. Oh, my God. Caroline, will you tell me what's happening? No, no, of course not. No, don't worry. What? No, no, it's fine. Look, I, I can be right along. No, you hold on there. I can be there in ten minutes. What? Yeah. Well, I should bloody well hope not. Look, I'll see you in a minute, OK? Bye. Oh, well, I mean shit. What can you do? Who'd have a brother, that's all I can say. He's only managed to get himself arrested. When did you leave this number? Driving under the influence of drink. Anybody who does that, I just ask him for trouble. There should be a rule. Don't drive with long hair. Listen, that was a very nice evening. You should. Well, you're a very nice man. Will you? Can you try to come back later? Yes, of course. I waited a week. She never came back to me. I was going to ring her, but I was too proud. Hello, Caroline. Yeah. Yeah, it's William. He got off. Good, that's really good news. Well, you really did it. You really gave them money. You know, I was always told that would work. 
Yes, well, I wondered, you know, about dinner. I'm sure we've had dinner. We can have it again. You want me to offer a different sort of evening? I'm well, sure if you'd tell me what sort of thing you'd like. Well, it's just easier. I hardly know you. I don't know what sort of thing to choose. No, I don't think... Well, what are you saying? I think it was good. It would be good again. Yeah, well, right. You have my number. Yeah, all right. See you. I'll talk to you soon. Of course, looking back, I should have abandoned it. People love chaos. I went on in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Keith's first public interview since his highly publicized period in jail. Keith wants to talk about the state of British prisons and also tell you something about the future of the band. Keith. Yeah, well, right. I think you all know something. I mean, how the stuff first got planted in my flat. But I'm not going to go back on that story. I think you know it pretty well by now. What I'd like to talk about is what happened afterwards. I mean, it's not easy to put into words. So, I'm trying to say, basically, the old prison is one that's defeating and non-productive. There are iniquitous indignities that are comparable only to that of Soviet Russia. Martyr to British justice. What I'm trying to say is it's getting really Cretin bad. Cretin out of jail. What? You know, I mean, frankly, everyone knows it. British prisons are an absolute disgrace. I take that story back to my editor. He wouldn't even look up to spit in my face. Red brick journalism. Thanks. That's what he calls it. I know. They hate our degrees. And we only mention prisons when there's a rock star about. We wouldn't write a word about what it's really like inside. And what's your interest? This isn't your story. Somebody told me they had a good sound. Right. You got it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Got a good story. Of course you have, Mike. I've got the most sensational story. Of course you have. Keep moving your legs. Bye, sir. Hi, right, William. Come on, mate. I'll find you a taxi. Soon be better. Taxi! The Times! Caroline? Excuse me? Has anyone seen Caroline? Hey? Excuse me? Is Caroline there? There the night you did it. I saw you from across the freeway. It wasn't Kathy in the Buick that night, it was you. Don't come near me, Roger. He knew you were lying. You lied from the very first day. People who are cheap and worthless and rotten always think they can push other people around.
good to see you. Oh, come on, William, I don't understand it. What is all the grief? What have I done wrong? spent an evening with me. Why do you think you're entitled to feel hurt? Listen, it's none of your business. Whatever I do, these are the people I work with. Sometimes I stay with them. Well, that's all right. I really want to see you. Let's move it, okay? show you something. I'm very pleased. I think I've done something good. Ah, oh, these are the ones. They were taken in a brothel. These are my best. Well, what do you think? Yeah, they're terrific. I didn't know they had them. What, brothels? Yes, of course. The band are going to use these lot as projections, part of their stage show. Oh, right, I see. You mean you didn't know there were brothels in London? Somehow I thought... It's such a strange idea. Oh, they're wonderful places. You should go. I know all the addresses. I could soon fix you up. They're all freaked out all over London. I had to hire a taxi and go round and literally shake them out of bed. I tell you, I wouldn't like to do it for a living. Organizing that lot. Can you imagine? With a woman photographer? It's the best part. When they agreed. William. So, I'm a very, very good photographer. Don't you think so? Are they very good? What else is it the band has you doing for them? Helping, being around. Are the band pleased? Do they like the photographs? Good Lord, William, I suppose I should ask. Somebody told me you've been sacked from the gallery. Yeah. I committed an error of taste. I ran off 53 lithographs, which is three more than the gallery knew about. I figured, what the hell, it's all a commodity, the market's rigged, what difference does it make? Of course, the point is, they like to do the rigging, nobody else. I've broken the rules. Well, in a way, you were making a protest. No, William, no. I was ripping them off. I had this strange Russian sort of mother. She was hysterical. She made no sense. When her family came out of Russia, they lived for a while at the Savoy. And all I've been told is that they ate so disgustingly that the management insisted that they lunch behind screens. And that is when it comes down to it. That is really their great <laughs> claim to fame. I had no childhood. Russians don't understand it. They expect you to be adults from the age of five. I didn't have a father. We lost him somewhere. 
What about your brother? My brother? He's fine. Caroline. I wonder. I'd like you to come home with me. Yes, well, I shall. I'm on my way. I'm afraid I like it to be easy. It's unjust, I know. It's a weakness of mine. If it just mattered less to you, then you'd be fine. You have that look. I really can't kiss you when you have that look. It freezes me up. What sort of look? A look that says, help me. I'm sorry. I can't. Caroline, come on, this is stupid. How can you do this? It's, it's just mad. I mean, for God's sake, you said you'd come home with me. Then when we get here, you simply freak out. I mean, for God's sake, do you think about my feelings? I mean, Jesus Christ, will you give me a break? I know. Stupid. I'm very frightened. I'm in love with you. Yes. Well, I suppose that was typical. She was always ready. One more trick up her sleeve. Oh, God, Jesus, William, I love you. You're the only man who's ever been kind. You're the first friend. You're the first friend I've ever had. Oh, God, how I love you. You are my friend. No, she hadn't. She still hadn't slept with me. That night she told me she loved me too much. It was certainly something unusual, but it wasn't something I'd see catching on. Andrew, I'd like you to meet Caroline. Hello. How are you? Andrew Caroline. I've been cooking. I've made enough for all of us. Good. Terrific. Cocoa, sausage, and eggs. You know, the odd thing is, that evening, I was happy. It was the weirdest night I've ever known. 
We sat round talking. It became very easy. I think you are. You're some sort of ideal. We were always closest when someone else was there. Just his work, that's all. I came in here. Yes, well, we've heard this. A complete Indian dinner, untouched on the floor. It had been there for 36 hours. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, that's what you'd say. Do you know what I think is the great sin of the world? Surely it's caring what anyone else thinks. I mean, we ought to be able. My God, it should be easy. We should be sure enough just to be ourselves. Yes, I remember. I was very happy. I was very flattered. I felt I was loved. So it began that very strange summer. Caroline said the best of her life. As for me, well, I lost all my opinions. I even lost the power of my eyes. I remember going round there early in the morning, visiting her place by surprise. Somehow, some way, it all seemed quite usual. I accepted all I was told. In fact, she didn't even try to deceive me. She told me everything, everything she did. Sometimes you can actually say to them what you want to, which is, we had a good night together, why can't we leave it? Why do we have to talk about love? People seem to want to drag you down with them. Why can no one be content with a night when it's good? I don't know, William, I don't understand it. I'm just glad I know you, that's all. She used to talk to me as if I were impartial. Did she never notice that she hurt me as well? No, I'm fine, thank you. I'll just wait here. Please don't disturb him. I am actually fine. Of all the odd things, the one that amazed me, she used to come and watch me, not tell me she was there. Hey, Will, have you got British Island? Yeah, I have it. Just hold it a moment. Your feature. Yeah, thanks. I'll do it. Just leave it under all the rest of that stuff. She used to say afterwards she'd never desired anyone as much as she desired me when I didn't know. In memory of W.B. Yeats. He disappeared in the dead of winter. The brooks were frozen, the airports almost deserted. Always implicit, there was always the promise, if I held on, the moment would come. All I had to do was to keep my faith with her, keep on trusting her, then we'd be fine. Hello, Zan. Hi. What are you up to? Middle-class agony. A column of my own. How inflation hits the middle-class hardest. How the working class keeps stealing their handbags. How they have to wait so long for a train. How the smell of curry drifts into their gardens. No, no, not quite. I'm not going that far. We aim for a tone of modest self-righteousness. All decent people getting a bad deal. Always getting mugged at Valencia Airport. Oh, they can't even get a plumber anymore. Why do we do it? It's all so dishonest. I've come to feel... No, I can't say. I only right to claim the expenses. 
It's my expenses they should publish, I feel. That's where my wizardry is fully extended. If I could write as I fiddle, I'd be Mencken, I'm sure. I was talking to someone. She was saying, if I feel as I do, the only honest thing would be to confront them. Yeah. Well, remind me, I'd like to be there. All right, everyone. Our morning conference. Now, what do we have to set the world on its ear? The Queen's in this, Joe. Thank you, Janice. Right, round the table. What more do we have? Well, we've got the ongoing story of uh, Princess Anne and her... I see in retrospect everything I did there. Everything I said was trying to please her. Yes, well, I can talk about football, talk about film stars, I probably shall. But I do wonder why we never have a conference asking ourselves why we do this job at all. Can we have some more coffee? Black, with sugar. Why we go on producing something every day that we know in our hearts to be poor now, look. Listen, I don't... I can't claim to be different. I'm just as guilty as anyone here. But I have got tired of living with the feeling that we all end up writing less well than we can. I came here. I'd worked in Wolverhampton. By no means, not a very good job. But at least there was no special pressure. You never felt you had to level everything down. I mean, at this paper, we all promote the fiction of nothing very difficult for the people out there. The British public is assumed to be stupid. And in a way, that suits us all fine. That's what we offer as our permanent excuse for not actually doing the job very well. Well, I can only tell you, I walk down Fleet Street. I look. I go into the bars. There you'll find the retreat into alcohol, the smell of bad conscience heavy in the air. I dread a lifetime randomly producing something which we all distrust and despise. I dread the effect on my person of a, of a lifetime given over to royalty and dogs. If we who work here can't believe in it, then how the hell can the people out there? All right. Yes. I know. I'm sorry. Listen, excuse me. I'm afraid I must go. Hey, that was great. You really did it. I never thought you'd do it. It was great. It was terrific. I mean, you just laid it out there. Alcohol. Wow, hit him where it hurts. I wasn't speaking to anyone present. I was ashamed. I was speaking to her. So what is it that you want? Do you want to be congratulated? Is that it? Oh, come on, William. Are you out of your mind? No, I'm not. All I'm saying is, I know it sounds stupid. All I think is I may have done some good. Well, for Christ's sake, it's you who's always encouraged me. It's you who's always saying what an awful rag it is. Yes. Right, good. So you told them. Why do you expect me to praise you as well? Oh, come on, Caroline. I... You told me excited, expecting! Why did you come in here with a smile on your face? I never understand you. You say you are independent. You say you are a person who will stand on his own. And yet, whenever you do something virtuous, you seem to think that you are entitled to come to me to collect some sort of reward. Well, that sort of weakness disgusts me. Do what you have to. Be your own man. Yeah. <laughs>
You must go back to bed. Fold. Do I have it? No. I'll raise you too, Bob. I'll cover that and raise you again. See that? Raise your quid. I'll see you. Queens and sixes. Aces and fours. Thanks very much. Sam's been telling me about your life here. Apparently you've been seeing an old friend of mine. All I hope is you can handle it better. I don't know anyone who held her for long. Andrew, can you cut? She's been a good friend to me. Oh, yes, I'm sure she is. For a time. Everyone always used to say she was ruthless. But I never minded. She was so good in bed. Well, I don't know. Who can judge people? Should we play for a bit more this time? Later in the summer, she disappeared completely. For a fortnight, she couldn't be found. Eventually, she called me. She'd been out of town. Now, she was in training. She joined a small dance troupe, dance and drama, a mixture of the two. I'm really pleased I've forgotten the discipline. What happened to the last job? Oh, I don't know. I was very hurt. Some work got rejected. I'd had enough. I decided to go. I wish you'd run me. I'd like to have helped you. Why would you help me? I'm absolutely fine. I don't have to tell you. She looked a great dancer. I was utterly frustrated. I put the knife in. You must forgive me. I came to tell you. I don't want to see you. I think we should stop. I don't know what role I'm meant to be serving. You don't use me. You just want me there. If only you could make some movement towards me. Touch me. I crave it, I'm afraid. It took a long time. It was mostly silence. Whatever I said, I couldn't make her fight.
Look, you don't know what people say of you. People say to me, you're a cold-hearted bitch. Everyone hates you. They find it offensive. People resent it. The way you're so sure. There's something about it. It puts people's backs yes, up. Yes, well, thank you. I must bear that in mind. Don't you understand? Don't you see what I'm saying? It's me who sticks up for you. It's me who stays loyal. Yes, I do see. And you want a reward. No! I'm just... saying... It must be very hard for you. Yes, it's unjust. It's one hell of a world. I felt disappointed. It wasn't what I wanted. I'd come for hysterics and loss of control. Well, that's it. You'd better go now. never loved anybody. I only love you. Well, there it was. I'd done what I came to. I started to watch her, but it came on to rain. Hey. Hey, you look pretty gloomy. No, no, I'm not. I'm just whack, that's all. I happen to see this. It's a first edition. Browning. Terrific. Thanks very much. Hey, listen, I was wondering, can we go to a movie? There's one with Carol Lombard, which I haven't oh, seen. Oh, good. Well, yes, I mean, I'd really like to. The problem is just... I have a friend coming round. Perhaps you'd like to... No. No, I wouldn't. I met her last Thursday. We just got engaged. I hope at least you'll hang on to meet her. She's very nice. She works in my field. I could see the future. I was inconsolable. I felt I'd been challenged. And I'd utterly failed. I then remember little of what happened. I know I was listless, I was bored and depressed. Can the minister tell us anything of the progress of the EEC negotiations? Whether the question of agricultural subsidies is coming up for reconsideration, and whether our future partners are going to be any less intransigent about the financial contribution the British are going to make once we're inside the market. Let me deal with that question in five parts. First, let me say that of all the inequities, they will be best dealt with when we're in... I suddenly found myself popular with Stevel. I had the clear feeling he knew. He'd put down my outburst to an unhappy love life. Now she was gone, he seemed very cheered. Has anyone told you? Your friend Caroline. Apparently she's back with Robert again. No. Oh, really? Well, I wish him well with her. Let's hope he doesn't turn out to have need.
I had a series of rather grim girlfriends. Some of them, well, not particularly nice. I suppose the truth is I badly needed flattery. Anyone who wanted me, I'd take them in. It was later in the autumn I started hearing rumours. Caroline had apparently been getting very thin. Then they stopped. Then I heard around Christmas she'd been found alone in her room. Apparently she'd sat there. She hadn't eaten. When they found her, she weighed barely seven stone. I thought if I go, it will only upset her. So I just gave the doctor a ring. Well, they're saying it's just undernourishment. She had some idea of living on her own. Apparently the worst is, it makes her hallucinate. They're not worried. They just think she's thin. I suppose you don't know. Does she ever ask for you? I should ask that. I should certainly find out. I started ringing. I rang in often. I mean, I always rang at least once a week. She began to get better. She put some weight on. But it counted for nothing. She'd lost her mind. You are the boy. She spoke warmly of you. She's much in love. You were always the one. It's all right. There's no accusation. You did what you had to. You followed your heart. Her mother turned out to be very, very stupid. I'm sure you're pursued. I spent the evening listening to her talk. Of course, now that she's left me, I have no money. I've relied on Caroline. I have no money of my own. All evening I listened. The talk flowed out of her. Nothing would stop her. A life of its own. Blacks are now all over this neighborhood. Those who aren't blacks are invariably Jews. It's just no longer a place for decent people. It all seemed pointless. What good could I do? Later that winter, she transferred to Springfield. I went to see her. She was feeling very bad. I'm sorry. I feel... I should have seen you earlier. I had a feeling. There was something to read. I hope you realize. Well, you must be quick. We miss you out there. I'd always believed her, everything she'd said about how one should live. In the space of four months, she had taught me everything. I felt very shocked. As to long-term damage, it's too soon to say. It's always difficult. With... Of course, I suppose if I have to be truthful, I also admit to a feeling well, of relief. I must thank you, Not at all. How can I put it? Delighted to help. I was grateful. That's what I felt. Thank God she was mad. Since that time, I haven't done badly. I have a family, a very kind wife, 
The paper has been losing circulation, so of course we've all had to keep on our toes. That situation has been quite interesting, though most of the time I'm chained to a desk. I've had great happiness from having children. Hello? Hello, Daddy. It's really given us a new lease of life. Ben is much the most active of the three. Ellen, the youngest, was born a bit slow. Laura and I have always tried to keep an open marriage. Listen. We think a marriage is refreshed by affairs. Oh, really? I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to everyone, but if you can do it and not go too far. Obviously, Caroline is much with me. I mean, it's something I shan't ever forget. What I always took to be her self-confidence now seems a way she had of hiding her fears. It breaks my heart that she couldn't reach out to me. If I'd been wiser, perhaps I'd have known. If anyone now asks me what I feel about these incidents, I can only tell you what I think for myself. Our lives dismay us. We know no comfort. We have dreams of leaving. Everyone I know. <laughs>